Welcome to this week's mobility video. This week I did things a little bit differently. Um, I recorded what we did for our uh, mobility session for the CrossFit class here at CrossFit Flourish. So um, I'm putting this one up for some of those people who missed it and it gives you guys an opportunity to work through it. So um, it is a little different. It is just a bit raw, so uh, bear with me. I will jump in from time to time just to sort of give you a heads up on what we're doing and how we're doing it. Uh, but most of the time you should be able to hear what I'm saying and should be able to hear it pretty clear. Um, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments section or hit me up in uh, my social media or email me at uh, coachgreyoliver at gmail.com, okay? Uh, we start up with a deep squat that we hold for about two minutes and we're just trying to test and assess where we're at. So hang through the intro guys and I'll talk you through some more stuff shortly. So as I said, we start with that deep squat and you'll see us sitting in that squat for a little bit and then I get one of the young guys out to demonstrate some foam rolling over the quadricep, which we then turn on to our ITB and our hamstring. We do that on both legs. Now, we spend about a minute or two minutes, up to about two minutes on different parts on each different part of those. The thing you wanna think about when you're doing your foam rolling is not to do big long sweeps okay now i talk about this a bit more off camera with the group but what i want you to think about is to do short little rolling bits and get um little side to side oscillations as well which you'll see me talk about i'll say to oscillate side to side and go up and down we're not looking for big swoops okay we just want to make sure that we are really honestly we're just trying to get that little bit of extra kick in the area so we want to let it sit deep into the tissue okay Oh yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of a test and it's just sitting down into a squat position. So you're going to hang out in a bottom of a squat as in a dead hangout, right? Now you can hang out, elbows on and just move around if you want, but we're hanging out here for a couple of minutes, right? So our best goal here is that we're trying to keep the chest tall. I don't want to see any rounded shoulders. So again, I'm not looking for this, right? I'm looking for a nice relaxed position where we're just sort of hanging out. You can have a little bit of a relaxed back. If you are someone who struggles with this, we can move you over to a pole and hold on to a pole to sit into the bottom position. But at this stage, we're just trying to stay flat on our feet. We're just trying to stay relaxed. So relaxing. Yeah. Get your hands off it. Get your hands off it. Good. How are we feeling? John's about to hernia, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> so with you, Lisa, I'm gonna get you to try and just use your elbows a bit and try and push out. Stay out. <laughs> <laughs> just make it short, right? <laughs> Good. Uh, so. Ah, cantilevers, so much better, right? <laughs> so what we're gonna do from here, guys, you can stand on up. Give <laughs> those legs a bit of a shake out, right? So we're going to test how that feels a little bit different later on. But what we want to start with is we're going to warm your muscles into what we're going to do, okay? which is why we have the foam roll. Right, so our first point of contact that we're going to do is the obvious one. right? We're going to foam roll out our quads. So when we're doing our quads for a foam roll out, we are looking junior. Come front and center and show me what I'm looking for. Okay, so I want to see that you have the weight of your leg. Yep, drop down. Yep, right there's good. So we want to see that you have the weight of your leg on that roller and the other leg is using to move up and down. You guys know this already, right? We're looking at moving side to side while we go up and down this leg as well, right? I want to see you guys get down on that roller. We're just going to warm these muscles into what we're doing. That's why we need it. Hello. That right there is what I'm talking about. All those muscles are just going to build There you go. <laughs> That's good. They're going cray cray. Yeah. So if we haven't hit the belly of the muscle yet, so the smack bang middle of your quad, let's hit that. 
haven't hit it yet, hit it again if you have. That's it, snow off that through there. Side to side on it. No, I don't want to. <laughs> Obviously need it. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> That's it. So at this stage, you guys are up in a position like this, right? With the foam roller under here, and we're rocking side to side like so. What you're going to do is you're going to take that foam roller and move it all the way over to the side of the leg now, just below that hip. So we're hitting the side of the leg, and we're going to move it down a little bit, about a quarter of the way down your leg. Just sit there for a second, right? Take the weight into it. There it is. Good. And once you feel the weight go into it, sit into it, Ali. Stop avoiding <laughs> and then rock a little bit side to side, right? So we're just moving side to side over. <laughs> Good, so that's your ITB we're looking at now, guys. This, this is what we're doing. Good. And we work a little further down the leg. Again, let it sink in. We're on the side of that leg. sit into it, all right? We're starting at just above the knee. Once it started to get a little bit of that weight into it, you start to feel a little bit more. You can move a little further down that leg. Um, honestly, it's about as much as you can get when you go side to side because those hammies, those hammies come all the way through here. All the way through here. Bingo. So if you can get, if you can get all the way into here, we're not looking necessarily at hitting our adductors today, but if you can get all the way into there with the straight leg, go for it. Absolutely. The more you can get on a side to side angle is better than an up and down angle, right? So a lot of the time, you guys, and I think it's pretty obvious that a lot just from what we're seeing with the foam roller now is that you guys forget how much a foam roller can do for you. Just a foam roller. You go for all the big fancy stuff, right? Go grab a trigger ball, stick it under your butt, go grab a band and do it off the rig. But you won't sit there with a foam roller and let it actually sink in. You'll do those big, long sweeps over the muscle because you think you're doing the right thing, right? Sit into it, let it get deep, and then start to oscillate it, right? That's what our goal is here. 
right? Move a little further up our leg, we're not already there, so it should be in the belly of the muscle, so it's right in the middle of our leg. For a lot of you, the hamstrings might feel quite as bad with the bottom roller, and that's okay. This is, again, this is a warm up for the stuff that we want to do tonight. We've only done one leg. Yeah. Yeah, that was fine. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting a minute. Good, move it a little further up now, moving up closer to our butt. We're just trying to loosen up all the leg muscles, get some blood flowing through them, so that when we start to attack these muscles that are having this scary later on, we know that when we test and retest our squat position later on, it's not affected so much by what's happening here, it's affected by what we've loosened up in this tight area around our hip flexor and our glutes, right? That's what our goal is tonight. Cool. All right. Guess what we got to do now? The other side. Start on the quads on our other side. So we're back to lying down. <laughs> so we're starting on top. So again, start low and work your way high and let it sink in first, right? Don't start doing those long sweeps up. Those long sweeps up aren't necessarily won't get the benefit. It's the sink in and those little oscillations that get the benefit, right? Cool, cool, cool. Worse off. Worse off. It's worse off than the other side. Take your time to sink in, good guys. Yeah, man, absolutely. Absolutely. So, look, and you'll probably find, though, that the smaller movements will get more benefit. Because again, big sweeps don't get as much, so you'll find an area that's a bit more glued up and then oscillate side to side, up and down around that. Like, small little movements around that will give a big difference, all right? Wait, you're probably the most entertaining person I've had on quads so far. <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> yeah. But then you're not allowed to have them. We want to see those. Like, we want to see that fat crying. <laughs> Alright, we're moving further down in the belly of the muscle if we haven't already. So moving to the middle of your quad, really let it sink in. Yeah, we've been fine. We haven't given you a barbell to roll out with tonight. We've done it with the foam roller. <laughs> so we want to talk about, uh, when we're doing this stuff, right, you've got all different tools that you want to use. You don't just want to go for one thing. So like I said, we're not using the barbell tonight. We're using the foam roller. You can use the barbell, and the barbell is for a lot deeper tissue stuff that we look at. This is just for sort of that medium range, all right? And where most of you generally hit when you're using your trigger guns and doing those long sweeps over the top, you're hitting a superficial area. So that's the area right on top, closest to the skin, not really doing much at all, okay? It's just loosening up the skin. Side to side, up and down. Right. Right, so we want to work closer to the hip now, it should be just below our hip crease, find that uncomfortable place. over on your side now let's go to that ITB so we're starting just below the hip on the side of our leg so same deal as before we should have our weight supported in the top of that position we're getting our weight into it and really sit down feel it in the leg first so if you're feeling it really high in the leg then that's a bit of an issue you really got to work on that you should be feeling it a little further down right we're talking like a quarter of the way down our leg we want to sink into that let it really start to 
feel deep, and that's when we're gonna to start to rock side to side and do the little movements up and down. Not the big movements, not the big sweeps, little movements. We've been doing an awful lot of things like running, squatting, deadlifts, the weightlifters in the room have been doing a ton of squats. These are the things that cause all the tension along that ITB, right? The muscles start to pull on either side of it and that's gonna create knee pain, right? We release this is gonna help us move a lot more free. So then move a little further down if you can. If you can't, hang on, that's fine. Good, work further down that leg. If we're not into the middle of the leg yet, let's get right into it. Aggressively work our way down closer to that knee. All right, so we're going to flip that all the way around now, and we're going into that hamstring for this leg now. So again, we should be close to the knee. So we're supporting ourselves with that. So the foam roller should sit under our, just above our knee here. Leg over the top, really get some weight into it, and we're side to side, up and down, finding those spots that we can work with. Pretty good. We're gonna go for a few minutes around here, guys, so get comfortable with being uncomfortable. So we've gone through our foam rolling uh, over our entire legs now, and we've done the quad, the ITB, and the hamstring. So now uh, we've done that on both legs, and we should have taken a fair bit of time there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to target the piriformis and really get that trigger ball deep into that um, that glute muscle to help relieve some tension around the hip. What we do is we create a figure four with our legs first, we then bring the knee up and then we roll over onto the trigger ball. After we've spent a bit of time oscillating side to side, we then start to move a little further back into uh, the, the glute minor sort of area where we can trigger along that band that's uh, along our hip and it starts to release a bit on our hip there as well. Okay, so have a watch and follow through guys. The dreaded seat. All right, so what we're going to do here, guys, is we're going to find your piriformis and we're going to dig this sucker right into it. All right, so piriformis is a very tiny little triangular shaped muscle that sits right in your glutes. And a very cool way to find it so that you can separate all the muscles that help you get this thing into it so we can loosen up everything down the side and back to your leg. All right, now, here's how we do it. What we're going to do to start with is we're going to ignore the fact that we have a ball. We're going to cross one leg over the other, right? So we're gonna make a figure four. So your ankle is going to be on the other side of your knee, essentially, right? Cool. I see everybody who still has tight glutes. Good, from there, you're just gonna plant the other foot in the ground. Oh, there's my shirt right there, they said. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, you're gonna take that ball, right? And what's gonna happen is we're gonna swivel over to the side and you're gonna see this ball right on the meaty part of your butt. So there's like a bit of tension that's coming around here. So if you think hip crease, roll it all the way around till you get to the meaty part, a little further up, John, not so close to the hole, man. <laughs> <laughs> so if you were to sit down, it'd be, it'd be on the side there, right? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put your weight on top of it. 
And then we go into oscillate, a little bit flatter. Get over on an alley, don't be shy. So you lean over to the side, you're not just sitting there like that, right? You get right on over, tip that knee over, so it's right towards the ground. <laughs> Found it! Bunch of tight asses. Right, so. The closer, the more, the more you get towards the meaty part of your butt, the more you're going to start to feel some more, like there'll be like tingles that go through your leg, and you'll start to go down other parts of your leg as well, right? Now, if you haven't found that yet, and you've just got pain in your butt, you're preparing for a real shock scene. Oh, shit. All right? So you still need to rotate over. I can't. You can. You don't want to. Right? So as I said, before we were hitting, right, a lot of you guys are still out here, right? You need to rotate a little further in still, right? Get right into the fat, the meaty bit there that just says, come and get me. <laughs> yeah, that bit. No, 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 yeah, yeah. The bit that makes you stop smiling. You'll start to sweat. Yep. Those who have silly tight hips, you should be the ones that pull funny faces at me, like John did when he first found it. All right, now you've sat there oscillating a little bit by little bit on it, right? I want you to just go up and down now, right? Up and down. Luna's all over. Luna says that you must do it. Right, so you lean on over. Tip, yep, and then up and down. That's it, that's it. You need to tip a whole lot more too, mate. You're not even there yet. Far off the mark. Good, you're on it. I'm not sure if you're Yeah, you're on it. Yeah, you're on it. Good. Good. Work a little higher to the higher part of your glute now. It's going to go a bit higher now. All right, so we're still here. All right, but all we've done is we've moved higher up. All right, so we've done that meaty part. We've worked higher up. It should be a lot better up here, but it's going to loosen things. So we just, again, circles up and down, and we're going to go side to side like this, right? I make it look easy because I do this a lot. There it is. You should have a whole lot of pain around here, man. This is where your squats struggle. <laughs> you just look at go back. This is your turn to hit. I'm not in pain. I'm not in pain. <laughs> I swear I do this stuff all the time. Good, okay. Take that ball out. Relax for a sec. Hey, don't worry, we're gonna fix that in like two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Russian, we need time for this. So we're doing the same on the other leg now. That's what you all wish for, right? It's the same deal again. Make a figure four. Have your ball ready to go next to you. Flatten that foot out. Ball comes into that meaty part, right? Yep. So you should just be able to sit it there and then lean over onto it. Like you just rotate over onto it and then start moving around until you find the spot. Once you've found the spot, you'll know it. Like I said, you get that little bit of a tingly feeling in different places. The piriformis is attached to a lot of things in the leg, all right? It makes a lot of things work and not work if it's tight. You've got some place that's a bit tighter than others, work it. Is it work it? Don't work it. Oh. <laughs> Convenient. <laughs> yeah, convenient cramps going on over here, Jane. Right when we see the tears come in your eyes. So there is a spot that you'll find. So that spot that you found that you, that you all sort of went, ooh, about. Hang out on that spot. Don't move for a second. Breathe through, sink into it a bit more. 
and then start to oscillate around that area. All right, that's how we find the deep tissue, that's how we find the areas to do the work. You guys are doing great. Proud of you all. So do I just tell this one more question? Yeah, I can. <laughs> Stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Woo! Yeah, yeah, she lost that one. So again, now we're going to work closer into the meaty part, right? So we've, we've been out here, we're going to work a little further in now. So we rotate even further over. Slide it along just a little bit if we have to. Might make you pull that face where you go, whoo! Yep, that's the one. That's the spot we're looking for. <laughs> Good. And this time we're going up and down a bit more, right? We're taking our time just sort of going up and down. This is the spot where we're going up and down in. Remember that? You're there again. There's an awful lot of um, emphysema like breathing going on to this. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of rattling in the chest going on. All right, from there we're working higher up on the hip again, the glute minor sort of area, and we're starting to go side to side with it. Remember what we did just to finish up before? Same deal, nothing changed. Loosen up them hips. Oh, yeah, there's another bit. Just like, oh. Keep rubbing that just a little longer. Alright, guys, doing great. How much you're missing up here tonight? Getting rid of the tight asses. All right, guys, relax, relax. Take that ball out, give it a bit of a slap around, spank yourself down. All right. We are, our next piece, we're gonna work a little higher up, but we're going to do a uh, foam roller again. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna target the QL area. So our goal here is to get deep into the QL using the edge of our foam roller, right? I'm actually gonna have to do something else for this. Come on, come on, come on, go. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, that's how we do it, people. Alright. Right. So what we're doing here, right, is we're not putting the foam roller in the middle of the back like we normally do, right? So normally when we're doing a roll and we go through like our spine erectors or our T-spine, we have it in the middle of our back. Alright? Hitting areas like this. What we're going to do is we're going to target to one side. Right? So to one side of our spine is what we're looking at. We're trying to hit that QL area, so that's a big, it's, it's a lot of people just gonna feel like a space that doesn't have muscle to use, right? But there is a big muscle there that tightens up on a lot of people, and it creates all these hip issues where a lot of people have if they've done a lot of kettlebell swings or deadlifts or anything where there's a lot of hip hinging and extending, and they tighten up and seize up in their lower back, right? They start to feel like they can't do it anymore. That's where this comes from, right? It's that sort of thing. If you've ever had an SI joint injury, if you've ever had to have no. your, uh, if you've had your SI joint crack, or if you've had a anything around your coccyx or tailbone sort of area, this is the area that gets tight. All right. So what we're going to do, one side of that. So find your spine erector. There's a muscle that sort of flexes there, and you're going to go just to the side of that. Right, we're gonna sit down on it. You want just a sec, Jane? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna sit down on, on one side, and we're gonna sort of rock over a little bit, right? So we're not flat on the back. You can have your hand on the foam roller to support it. But we're gonna be over on the side a little bit, and we're going to go up and down slowly, right? Now when I say up and down, we're going from that area just above your hip to just where your rib cage starts. It's an area about this big that we're moving, right? Not very far at all. And you're not going, you're not going rock, 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 rock. When I say when we're rocking, we're doing this, right? We're leaning in, and we're just sitting here. We have a conversation, nothing too painful, right? 
After you've done about three or four swoops, you should feel it get deeper. Right? It'll start to hit around that spine erector on its side, and then it starts to hit towards our cue valve. I want you guys in there, hanging out. Don't all jump at the opportunity to do something like that spine. Good, so rotate over a bit more for me, Cal. So lean over, there we go. Same with you, big guy. Good, a little lower on you, Georgia. Thank you. How are we doing, Lise? Love and life? Yeah. Cool. So there's also a stretch in the foam rolling that I forgot to mention before, which is to target your QL, a quadra quadratus lumborum, right? Now this is a big cubic, there's a big square like muscle that sits in the back or uh, in, in the lower portions of your back. And our goal with this guys is to try and get you a bit more free and uh, relieve some of that tension in your lower back. Um, I explain exactly what to do in this, but essentially what we're doing is we're using that foam roller to sit deep into it so that we can, um, we can essentially just move a bit more freely in the lower spine region, okay? Um, yeah, I'll tuck this in just before that as well. Would you look at that? All right, from here, what we're going to do is we're going to reach all the way over to one side, and you're going to reach towards your toes, just like young Paige is doing. Oh, look at that. That's almost like a lover's thing. See what I did there, See what I did there Paige? She pays my bills. Good. Over the top of your head if you can, Cal. There we go. Reaching right over, hanging on out. Good. And now everyone breathe. Junior, get that arm over the top, buddy. Thanking you. Good job, good job, good job.
So our next one that we cover, guys, is the pigeon stretch. And I cut off the intro just a little bit on this, but what I'm talking about is getting the front foot out a little further and sitting the hips low while having our chest tall and our back leg as straight as we can get it. So it's not just a stretch on your glute, it is also a stretch on your hip flexor on the back leg, right? So if we get the chest tall, we can get this stretch up and we drop that hip low. What I talk about is moving the front foot further out if we don't feel a stretch in our, um, in our glute area, right? So it is a stretch, you wanna feel a stretch, so make sure you're looking for these areas. Um, I'm gonna scoot straight forward again into the banded pigeon stretch as well. I give a little bit of a talk about it in there as well on how to do it, but essentially what we're trying to do is let that femur move a little bit out of that, um, that, that joint that sits in the hip there, just to try and create a little bit of freedom so that we can move around a bit more easily if we've been sitting all day. Um, hang deep, try and watch with, uh, try and watch along and um, hold the pigeon stretch for about a minute on each and then when you're in the banded pigeon stretch we want to do two minutes on each, okay? Follow along. Going to be essentially tucked in close. So um, if we're looking for more stretch we pull that leg further out, okay? And that's what's going to give us a stretch. Now when you guys are doing this and we're going to be banded up, if you aren't feeling much of a stretch in your glutes, around that area, we're going to pull that foot further out to create that extra stretch, okay? So I want everybody to just try and find your pigeon stretch position for now so that we can assess how everybody's pigeon stretch looks before we move on from here and start getting a good. Now, and the other thing with this, guys, is the most common fault I see in a pigeon stretch is everyone leans forward. You're taking away the stretch of your hip flexor if you lean forward. Sit up. A pigeon stretch is supposed to be tall. A pigeon stretch is supposed to be tall, guys. So this next one is the banded pigeon stretch. Uh, I give a pretty good demo on this one, so I won't talk too much about it. Uh, just follow through, and the idea with this is to hold for about at least two minutes either side. I only have them hold for about a minute to a minute and a half in this one, but I think if you're doing this at home and you have a band that you can use, really try and do it for about two minutes and you'll really benefit from it a bit more. Um, and then straight after that, I'll take you guys into the uh, lat stretch, which again will help loosen things up. We'll talk about that soon. When you're doing a banded variation of this, right, you're still going to find that same position we were looking at before. But what we're going to do is we're going to attach a band. Now I've got a red band here, you can use a blue band, you can use an orange band if you really want. Our job here is to help move that hip a little further along. Because what happens is, if these muscles get tight a lot, in here it starts to tuck in. So we notice a lot when we squat, we start to see people squatting like this, right? Or they can't really drive those knees out. We get jammed up in here, so the glutes are tight, hip flexors are tight, everything's pulling us in. Right, so our goal here is we're going to stretch out all this glute area and we're going to give it a little bit of a pull along our bone that sits in that, that socket and it's going to just sort of move it along a little bit so it's got a bit more freedom. Right? Well, it's not designed to pull it out of the socket, so don't think it's doing anything like that. Our goal is just to help free up those hips so it's got more room to move again. All right, so our goal, we're placing this band, sorry, we're placing this band around the post. <laughs> Hopefully we can place this band around the post. This guy cannot. Alright? Yeah, we invited this guy. Hi, my name's Greg, it's my first day. Alright, we want it right up around our hip, okay? So, we're going to bring it right up around our hip, and we're going to sit ourselves into the pigeon pose after we've taken a stride left to get some tension here. Alright? Or over to get some tension here. Once we're into our pigeon position, we're hanging out. That's all we're doing. We've just given it a little bit of extra pull over that side. All right? And we're hanging out here for a couple minutes. Fun times, happy days. Go grab a band. The more pull we can get there, the better for you at this stage. <laughs> Good. Okay, so the banded Samson stretch, guys. A Samson stretch to start with is when we're down on one knee and we're looking at stretching through the hip flexor, right? So we don't lean over, we keep the chest tall, and our goal is to push the hip forward while we sink into it. Okay, so forward while we sink into this. So you don't necessarily need a big, thick band. 
Um, me personally, these bands are fine. So what you do is you get the band at about your knee height, strap it in, same deal, right up near the, right? And then you take that leg back, getting some tension on it, drop that knee down. And then if you need to, you can put some extra pressure in there. Hold up there for a second. And then what we're doing is we're trying to sink into this. So we keep the chest tall and let that hip drop. Right? We're just hanging out here, letting the body fight against that band for a little bit. All right? Cool. We're going to be here for a couple of minutes. Off you go. Anyone got any good jokes? Tension on, we've changed legs. We're going for at least two minutes here. Again, the band is at your knee height. You wrap it up around your hip, and then we sit in low. So drop the hip, so you push the hip forward and drop into it, okay? Preferably with your hands off. The our, very last, our very last stretch that we do today is the lat stretch, and that's to loosen up the final pieces that tuck into our lower back region that we loosened up with the QL. Um, as well as the glutes, right? So what we're going to do is if you just follow the video where I get to page and we just Have the hand in the band and we really stretch out take the foot behind our Our hand that is extended long and really stretch out breathe through try and hold it again at home Try and hold it for about two minutes. I only held them for about a minute in this clip. So um, This will help free you up once you've done that retest your two-minute squat and you're done for the day You're going to put your hand Wrap it around Grab it nice and tight on that band. You're going to take a step back. All right? I feel like this band's too light for you, John. All right? So we take a big step back. That's not, I'm not even looking at you now. Let's go to Paige. All right? So we take a big step back. Right? And, and we're looking at creating tension down our part, mainly around here, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take, um, it should be our opposite leg, I believe. Nope, same leg, same leg as your arm. Push it back so it's creating tension down the side here, right? And you're going to reach nice and long. Cross the foot over if you have to. There we go. We're only going to hold it for a minute or so. Other leg back, Ali. Yep, big stretch through. And now you can breathe. There we go. Don't forget that super important hands. Find that position on your new hand. Again, reach the same leg back, even reach it around you to find a good position so we get a nice bit of tension down that side of the body. It should be our lat that we're feeling the tension in. Obviously your shoulder's gonna feel something, but we're looking for it mainly around that part of the body, right? That Lower back onto the side, just past our rib cage. And relax. Okay, let's not worry so much about our bands right now. What I want you guys to do, come back into your circle. For those who needed the pole to hold on to earlier, we want to reset that. Squats feeling, right? So our goal here is to be able to sit down and hang out for at least a minute in a squat position without it feeling like rubbish and without everything feeling too tight, right? So to start with, if you need the post, try and go without the post to start with. For those who were fine without the post, let's sit down, find that position, try to knees out if you have to. Do a little loose up. That's a lot better than the loose up. Well done. That's it. So it should be at least a little bit loose for now. For now. 
Given that's how we live it, don't be mad at the system, it's simply how we've existed. I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians and truth.